Sardinia is now a kingdom, the one smallest sapling of the Taurus dynasty grown into a mighty oak, whose branches extend outward from our small island. King Simeon inherits the family title. The man is known for being just and good, who fights a war within himself over his desires for more earthly possessions. Simeon's siblings rule the rest of the family island, their titles split evenly, with the bond of kinship running strong. Where one might expect discord, there is only cooperation, at least for now. With many children, an ambitious court and a crusade being discussed once more in Rome, Simeon is likely to rule over a complex and vital time for a Christian monarch. The question is whether he is capable enough to lead his family through it. This is the sixth episode of a roleplay mega campaign that will go from Crusader Kings to Stellaris. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. So King Simeon is currently 39 years old. He is temperate, just, but greedy. So he's a he's a very contradictory individual. Although he is known for being a very good leader in many ways. He's a just man. He's he's very all he's all about the money. Is he competent? Alright, he's got 13 stewardship. He'd be known for being certainly capable but nothing like his ancestors. We'll go for wealth, given he's greedy. We're gonna make the Jedi of Cagliari um, our chancellor. Now, they're of our line now. We got a matrilineal marriage with our grandfather's daughters. She got a matrilineal marriage, and the cadet house that was also in Cagliari is no more. So they're of our line now. So we're gonna make Jedi Gavini of Cagliari our chancellor. He'd be our cousin once removed, I wanna say. Oh my God. He has an eidetic memory. Probably nice to have a chancellor that has a photographic memory, huh? That'd be pretty cool. For our steward, we will go for Judas and Italia of Tortoli, another one of our vassals. We have very competent vassals, don't we? For our marshal, we'll go for Jedi Galu. Everyone on this island is related to us, by the way. Our, our, our dynasty just rules everywhere. Although that's good for our dynasty, if we're going to be honest, that will almost certainly create a lot of political issues as we go down the line. And then lastly, our spy master will be our brother, Prince Miguela. Uh, who is glowing and intelligent. We've got a very, very competent council, don't we? My gosh, you don't normally see that in a game like this. We have three sons and two daughters. Our heir and son is Prince Alessandro. He is fickle, zealous, and forgiving. He's a thrifty clerk. He's not very competent. He's only 18, though. Perhaps he'll get better with time. Our grandfather was famous for that, Castoro. Um, our second daughter is Princess Adila. She is diligent, ambitious, and greedy, and a student intellectual, very competent. Our third, uh, second daughter is Princess Elena. She is unbetrothed. She is wrathful, temperate, content, and insightful thinker and intelligent. Our second son is Prince Simeon, named after us, of course. He'd be Simeon II. He is calm, forgiving, cynical, and rowdy. Not super competent, but he's only 14. He's just, he's just coming of age. And then we've got our youngest son, who was just born, Prince, uh, uh, Prince Aloveru. And uh, we, don't, we don't know anything about him. He's only one. We're going to pick his education, and we're going to go ahead, I think, and probably make him a scholar. So we also our wife, of course, Queen Oda. She is from the Habsburgs, which are a fairly wealthy uh, lower German house. So that's where we're at right now. We only control Sasari. It's very wealthy. We get a lot of taxation. Well, it's a very, 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 very prosperous trade hub. I mean, completely. But all our titles got split between our siblings. So we have only one one real holding. The Lollards. Dupiagu in Apula has announced to the world that he and his vessels have converted to Lollardy. Heresy in Italy. Disgusting. The time is now. After so many much preparation and waiting, the bishop has arrived, and so have all my guests. The day after now, I will be a true king, and nobody can say otherwise. In the midst of the festivities, the captain of the guard hurries towards me. My lord, it seems as someone has set fire to the dynasty banner. The evidence to uh, <coughs> points towards my lord's sister, Queen Yana, who has been acting strange this evening. That's our sister who's married to the king of Leon. We're going to chew her out and demand that she pay for it. My liege, I seek your aid in combating the issue of bandits harassing the modest people of Tortoli. She pauses to sigh. I cannot fix the problem with the resources I have. I ask for any aid that you can spare. She has plenty of money and plenty of soldiers. So I don't know what she is talking about because she's avaricious. We're also really greedy, so we're not just going to hand away resources if she has them. We'll send our steward to help her. We're not going to send any money because we're greedy, but we will send our steward. We can do that. The next pe uh, petitioner is evidently somewhat of a stranger in this court, as I do not recognize her, and the eyes of Marshal Galu have been on them since they first entered. My lord, I have come to declare the people of Ayasio are refusing to pay taxes you have levied upon us. In times past, our land and people were granted rights and privileges, which your recent exactions ignore. 
We request that you address our concerns fairly or else. Are we getting threatened? We're going to renegotiate the charters and get a better deal. We succeeded. We renego renegotiated them so we made even more money and got a tax assessor. So, wonderful. That actually worked exactly in our favor. I arrived back at my castle after a long, lonely walk. Another year passed, another year older. I was born this day 40 years ago. The older... He's having a midlife crisis. The older I get, the more I cherish the relationships I've cultivated over the years. So it saddens me that I have not heard from my wife, Oda, or any of my friends today. Did no one say anything on our birthday? Oof, that's... That's a bit rough. I trudge along to my chambers, loneliness impeding my lazy feet when I hear a clang and hushed whispers from down the hallway. What could it be at this hour? What a surprise. All my nearest and dearest friends have come together to wish me well as I begin the next year of life. There is even a table laden with pomegranate cakes, my favorite. Here I was thinking that everyone had forgotten me. I cannot believe that Oda went to all the trouble of arranging this in secret. I had no clue such a thoughtful surprise was being planned. My friend Agnes approaches me, struggling to carry the beautifully wrapped packages, even the trickster. She says, I have three gifts for the choosing. One shall be yours, but which shall it be? This is our sister-in-law. Our older, we weren't supposed to inherit. Simeon was not supposed to inherit. He was the second son. Our brother, Castor, was supposed to inherit, and he died. Uh, probably was murdered. We don't know what happened. This is his wife. We got, ooh, Simeon, King Simeon's laws and ordinance. A beautiful tome that shows an excellent understanding of stewardship. Wow. It increases our vassal limit and gives us way more stewardship experience. The fire roars, drinks have been had, and Oda is calling out to me for a story. My first thought is of a famous Sardinian folktale, a classic that never fails to delight. On the other hand, what if I told a story of my own life? Perhaps the time my friend Theodosia and Agnes threw me a surprise birthday. That just happened! She was there! She threw it for you, man! Come on! We'll do a traditional story. Let's not tell the story of, like, our birthday party from, like, what, a month ago? We'll go ahead and upgrade all our fort tiers to... All of our castle tiers to three. We'll go ahead and upgrade our court a little bit. We're a king. We need to have at least a tier four court. Tier three is just embarrassing. Simeon has come of age. He is our second son. He ended up being cynical, forgiving, and calm. Not the most competent, but he's all right. Let's go ahead and betroth our daughter. Our second daughter has not gotten a husband. She is 17. She's very competent. The Duke of Piedmont, who has powerful lungs, Piedmont is very close to us, too. That's right across the, the water. I'm sure we trade heavily with Genoa, too, so... Well, we'll, we'll marry our sister to him, regardless. She needs a good husband. Yeah, one of our daughters can be married, too. Princess Elena. Elena could also be married. I think we'll marry our daughter to the Duke of Lower Lorraine. Although he is a bleeder. He is a, he's a powerful man and a powerful vassal of the Holy Roman Empire. So we'll, 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 we'll marry our daughter to him. We've been invited to the wedding, too. Um... We'll make the trip. We like our daughter. She's probably our favorite daughter, let's be honest. She's very, she's very competent. She's, as I said before, content, temperate, wrathful, and intelligent. She'd be our favorite daughter. Any parent who says they don't have a favorite child is fucking lying. Our wife is talking. Um, no, of course, you're very interesting. We like our wife, even though she's an adulterer. We just pretend that didn't happen. She's our soulmate, our, our wife, our queen. We're just going to pretend that she wasn't cheating on us. It's fine. What started as an ordinary wedding became an exceptional one thanks to the presence of Duke Kuna. Hmm. We spoke all evening about all manner of subjects, and as things would have it, we seemed to have a lot in common. I had such a good time with him. But we hit it off with our, with our daughter's uh, husband. Nice. He's, uh, he's an interesting guy. He's zealous. Temp uh, greedy. We'd probably just disca discuss tax policy. We're both greedy. All right, wonderful. Well, it was a, for, besides our wife uh, getting way too drunk, it was a good, it was a good celebration. We're going to head back to Sardinia. The levy's burden on your vassals is stretching their troops tonight. I urge you to consider lowering taxes in the kingdom of Sardinia so they can properly uh, defend themselves from aggression. Our uncle and marshal is suggesting this. He is a competent man. We like him. We trust what he has to say. But unfortunately, we're greedy. So we're not going to do that. Man. Our uncle is a beast. Ambitious, diligent, temperate, intelligent. A crusader, a novice physician, a skilled tactician, gallant, a blade master, a holy warrior? Jesus Christ, our uncle is a beast. All right, uh, our son and heir is uh, was marrying his wife. Who the fuck is this? We didn't approve this marriage? What the hell is this? Son, I did not approve your marriage. We're not going to support this. You can figure out your own wedding. I will not have it. Not in my house, child. I didn't approve this marriage. Unacceptable. We need to talk with our son and demand he has a divorce. He's not going to do it. That little shit. 
She is of noble blood, but goddamn from the, the far east. That's that's why he's marrying her. There it is. Okay, we figured out why he's marrying her. I, I get it, but no. No, 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 You need to divorce your wife. Listen, we need to talk with our son. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna invite him to, to have some chats. We're gonna start getting close to him again. We need to convince him to divorce this woman. I'll I'll speak with the Pope myself. We'll we'll get him we'll get him a divorce. This is unacceptable. It's not happening. Alright, son, come on. You know this is not the best for the family. I will pay you, son, a sizable sum of money if you divorce your wife, okay? We're gonna I'm gonna send you a lot of money. You can do whatever you want with it. You can do whatever you want. If you want to go uh, screw around, you know, if you want to go on a trip, do whatever you want. Here, just just divorce your wife. All right, our son didn't accept the gifts. He said yes. Aha! He will divorce his wife. He agreed. Money talks, and he is a thrifty clerk. He takes after us in that capacity. Good lad. Good lad. Divorce this woman. My uncle Jedi Galu. Oh, the absolute beast has honored me with a visit and has brought one of his courtiers along. Galu approaches me excitedly. Well met, King Simeon. It pleases me to see you thriving here in Lagodoro. It occurred to me that Lambert here might be of service in your court. He has a myriad streams of influence and ways to take care of things quietly. Uh, I would make use of him myself, but alas, it doesn't seem possible. I would hate to see this great talent go to waste. Oh, he's strong. Oh man, he is a, he's a beast. He's gluttonous, brave, and shy. He's just a very quiet dude who can absolutely fuck your shit up. And we befriend him too. We befriend our, our uncle. All right, our son has gotten divorced. Let's find him a proper wife. None of, none of this marrying for for uh for for love love we'll go with that let's find him a good wife a good noble woman good family good breeding adeline de albertini she is a deceitful callous bossy giant the daughter of the duke of lombardy a prestigious house a good house but we hear rumors that she's fucking massive she's big there's nothing wrong with her just just extremely large. All right, cool. They'll be able to marry, be married in a few years then. I'm happily soaking in the bathhouse, sharing deep reflections and salacious jokes with my Jedi, well, Jedi Gavini, who is our cousin. Nice. Oh, he's the one with a photographic memory. He's our chancellor. As I feel all the tension leave my body, I realize that it's not the warm water loosening my muscles. I'm genuinely having fun. And it's because of Gavini's company. And so we discovered our common passion for bathhouses. Nice. Uh, we hadn't had any chance to really interact to get to know it. Uh, get to know each other very well. I really look forward to our regular rendezvous here as they are filled with laughter and merriment. We're making a lot of friends, aren't we? Goddamn. For a man with four Diplo, he is sure a very diplomatic guy. As additional payment in a recent trade, I find myself in possession of a large herd of cattle. I've been assured that the animals are the highest quality, but the question is what should be done with those that remain? Let's try and make an even bigger cattle herd. We're greedy. And we got a large cattle herd. Well, wonderful. Look at that. Oh my God, we have 37 development. And it's only 1187. Man, Sasari would just be a super big city, a super big trading port. Why, gosh. King or peasant, high or low, it does not matter. In the end, we are all mortals. I was reminded of this as I woke coughing in the early morning hours until like pounding my head and throat. All right, she improved our disease symptoms. We, we do have a good physician for once. Ah, good. Our brother is paying homage to us. Good man, good man. We're very close. He really likes us. Our family has a shockingly close relationship given how, like, how just fundamentally flawed we were, our family has been. Both of our brothers really like us. I mean, they do have titles and they're quite wealthy. So I guess that makes sense. Our splendor level just went up. Oh, we are now a well-known dynasty in the world. We're well on our way to significant. During the daily management of my realm, I am learned of I have learned of a several different opportunities I can pursue. Each opportunity has great potential, but realistically, I can only go after one. A lost tome we discovered help managing the holdings of our brother or securing trade deals. We're wealthy, we, we're greedy, so we take the trade deals. It's a lot of money, my gosh. Yeah, we can upgrade our castle to uh, to level three. We'll, we'll almost hit the money for that. It makes sense we'd wanna have a bigger castle. I mean, we're so fucking wealthy and Cesari is so, so developed that we definitely would attract raiders and things like that. We haven't seen the Vikings come down here, but most of them are Catholics now. I saw her between the market stalls of Cesari, a heavy pouch tugging at my belt. How do I make this coin work for me? As I admire the wares of local smith, good steel, a sound investment, my uncle Jedek Galu, ah, the, 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 the Chad himself, uh, suddenly appears in my side. A word of advice, my friend. Have a look at the mason's workshop over there. Their wares might be simple, but their potential is great. This dude is such a beast. Always with the good advice, which decreases building costs and gives way more taxes. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Man, 65. Let's just hope this dude lives to like 100. 
My lord, my steward Janice and Natalia takes the floor. I have an idea to improve taxation. Ooh. Color me intrigued as a greedy man. You can send surveyors to question your subjects about every property, its name, owner, extension, and value. And how many people and animals live there? A survey. It's expensive. Well, that seems very useful. We could tax them even better. So we'll do that. An ancient figure approaches my throne with a click and tap of his cane accompanying each step. My lord, I am a genealogist, and you are aware you are of a noble origin. However, noble is not quite the same as divine or mythical. I desire to write a school which will trace your complete lineage back to the dawn of history. For a few gold pieces, of course, I can reveal the truth to you and the world. You are a true descendant of the legendary founders of this land. Fine by me, if you would like to prove that for the whole world. Looks very contrite. The last period has been very tough on my domain. Extra expenses were required on every front, and my coffers are sadly empty. No, he's he's telling the truth. We'd know that. He's very poor. It pains me too, but I resolve to appeal to your munificence for help to paying off the debts. I will not forget your generosity in my time of need. Normally, I'd say no to this, but we would know that he did. He's telling the truth. He's He's got a deficit, and he's our friend, and he's our blood. So we will, as much as it would pain us, we would do it. Lately, it feels like I am constantly being distracted by lascivious thoughts. Oh, no. Simeon, no. Uh, and erotic fantasies. Oh, boy. With all the hardships of my everyday life, it is all too easy to lose myself in daydreams and forget about reality. These desires are clear interfering with my life, but what should I do about them? We're going to get more stress, and we're going to go in a private room, and we're going to flagellate ourselves. The whip falls by my back, and I shudder at the clarity it brings. This was a real thing back in the day, which is terrifying. Pain is all that I feel, and pain is all that is on my mind. All right, we're really stressed. I think I think we need a new look. We've cut our hair. We're balding. Fuck it. We're going to start shaving our head. We're, 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 we had so much stress. We had an identity crisis. We're, we're, we're in our 40s. Ah, oh, we embraced that tradition. Good. We, we got maritime mercantilism last session, but uh, it finally has been secured. So uh, Sardinians are now very well known and culturally very... Uh, very big traders. So we're isolationist, we're stalwart defenders, and we're maritime mercantilists. It is done, my lord, states my steward, Judas and Natalia, as she bows in front of me. Several months ago, you commissioned a survey of all your lands. Now it is completed, and details on ownership and land values are collected in this book. As long as this description is faithfully uh, in reality, your taxation will be more efficient throughout the realm. We get steward land surveys, which give us more vassal uh, tax. Nice. Fuck it, we're gonna go to Jerusalem. It may be controlled by heathens, but we're gonna go there. We're having a midlife crisis, and you know what you do in a midlife crisis? You make dangerous and stupid decisions. Not all the time, but it is fairly common. For every week that passes, my fellowship grows even smaller. Some have gone as far as they can before the need to return overtakes them. Others have left for more unfortunate ends. We are under the protection of God. We'll be fine. We're not gonna spend money. He's a humble man. He's a humble traveler. Among my fellow pilgrims, there is a woman who preaches compassion and fellowship until she reaches the topic of heathens. One evening around the campfire, she loudly declares them to be abdominable monsters in the eyes of God, deviants and child murderers all. Most people avert their eyes when she looks at them. Tonight, I was not quick enough. Do you not agree, oh king? We're a trading mercantilist uh, kingdom, although our ancestors have fought the Muslims a lot. We probably trade with them often, so we're, we're probably not like that. We're not zealous and we're just, so. They're not all that bad. We'll get sympathy for heathens. No other city in the world has a history quite like Jerusalem. In addition to the many other holy sites there, the city contains the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Wonderful. We're now a pilgrim. Whoa, we got a holy object. St. Nicholas's kneecap. We'll host this wedding at the court. We will pay for this one. All right, now our heir needs to go make some kids because we need more heirs. Oh, God damn it, he puked all over us. Why are all of our family always getting too drunk and puking on us? I swear to God, we're gonna call him out for it, a little shit. Our son needs to marry someone. He's 21, he has no titles. We can't give them any. We'll marry uh, We'll marry our second son to the Princess of England, Eleanor. Yeah, we're, we're gonna become very close with the King of England then. Let's start sending him letters. A papal envoy has reached my court bringing news from the Vatican. Pope Leo issued a call to arms to all righteous Christian rulers. As a Catholic king, I'm expected to prepare my men to support the most holy cause, sponsored by the church, the Third Crusade. For Andalusia, we're gonna go after Iberia. Oh yes, don't need to tell me twice. Let's do it. We're gonna appoint our second son, Simeon, as our beneficiary. Maybe he'll actually get some land in, uh, in Iberia. Oh no, oh no, 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 oh. He's dead. The Mega Chad Jedi Galu has died, our uncle. 
uh, right before the crusade we were gonna fight together in Iberia and he died oh man 67 he died of gout ah oh, so wealthy he died from it he was apparently quite depressed in his final years we didn't know about that that's a shame um god damn it he was a veteran crusader he would have fought in two crusades if he had been alive for this wow ah oh, we had a grandson good Alessandro he's also gonna be a giant we're gonna give the lad a martial education that's our grandson well, well, our son, he's getting trained in learning, isn't he? We'll get our physician to teach him. The time has finally come to bring St. George's holy wrath against the vile infidels of Andalusia. Inflamed by righteous fury and unyielding resolve, the great army of crusaders assembled by Pope Leo sets forth to deliver divine justice. It was our grandfather who fought in the last crusade. Our, our father did too. He accompanied his father on it. So we will perhaps become a crusader ourselves. We're sieging out Majorca. We can't have them have a any territories in the Mediterranean during this to, to stage an invasion. Oh, let's reinforce the armies of the Pope. They're to the south of Cordoba right now. We're gonna get there, come on, come on, get in there. Reinforce, reinforce. We got there in time. Oh my gosh, we just changed the course of that battle. Holy crap. We saved the armies of the Pope. There's a large force moving in. Let's, let's reinforce the Pope's armies again. Ah, oh, we won't make it. Let's go to Cordoba. Our grandfather and our father were there in the siege of Jerusalem and took the holy city. It is only fair that we be the ones to take Cordoba, the spiritual capital of Islam in Iberia. We're losing a lot of men in the siege though. It is taking a heavy toll. If we get hit by any army, we're gonna get defeated here. Six months left too. Come on. Uh oh, that's, that's a, oh no, oh God. We will defend the siege of Cordoba. This is like the first crusade. Eight of our men got away. It was a slaughter. We lost 1,900 soldiers. We had almost taken Cordoba. 